Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Deepesh Mandalia. Um, I'm live today with Nick Peroni. Really excited to speak to him. So um, hopefully you guys can hear. I know that we have a slightly choppy line coming straight from Manila, which is quite cool. Um, so I'm going to share this into a few groups. Hopefully everyone who's signed up can see it as well. Um, how are you doing, Nick? Can you hear me okay? Hey. Yeah, I can hear you. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm I'm happy to be here. And yeah, I will apologize right now at the beginning, uh, as I was just telling Deepish um, here, that it's, you know, the, the Wi-Fi is out because it's been pouring here in Manila for like three days. And so I'm on my 4G and it's not quite the best connection. But which is, I mean, you know, I guess it is what it is. We're going to try to roll with it because I was excited about this and looking forward to talking with you and, and doing it. Absolutely. So let's try our best. So um, I'm going to share this out into um, the group. So there's a few groups that are following this and hopefully they can all get the live stream. So I'm just going to literally copy the link out now. Um, but whilst we're doing that, actually, why don't you just kick off with a quick intro of uh, kind of who you are and then I'll kind of start the um, interview as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, um for anybody that is unfamiliar, um, I'm running a group called Ecom Empires, and that's really where um, I got like most of what's going on for me right now. I've been an entrepreneur for a few years, but um, Ecom Empires is a group I run that has like 60,000 people in it, and so I've been traveling a lot and working with people on their business and, and uh, going to events all around the world. And so really become like very deeply involved in this e-com industry and just helping people um, with their Shopify stores, getting results. And it's been really awesome. It's been really amazing. You know, it gets me to, I get to meet um, people like you that are doing awesome things with, you know, Facebook ads and, and e-com industry. So um, that's, that's really what my focus has been. I just love being part of this whole industry, being part of marketing and working on stuff and working with other people on their businesses and just kind of using this opportunity to help, uh, you know, promote success and opportunity around the world for being able to do what you want, achieve your goals, achieve your dreams, you know, that kind of thing. That's pretty amazing. So um, for anyone that doesn't know me who's following on the public stream, so I'm Deepesh Mandalia, uh, Facebook ads agency owner, trainer, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I actually got, I've, I've been following Nick actually probably for about 18 months now. Nick probably don't even know that. So um, I started looking into dropship about 18 months ago. Nick's um, Facebook group was one of the first ones I started to follow. And, you know, the, the impact that he's having with his students and, you know, the, the amount he's giving back is just, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's many people in the e-com space that are just giving that much value. So that's the thing, first thing that drew me into Nick's work and actually um, following actually what he's doing now, and we're going to go into it shortly around masterminds and stuff. I think it's super powerful what he's actually working on. So we're going to go through some of that as well. Um, and, you know, for me, it's a good learning experience. I know Facebook ads. I've done e-com for uh, 15 years. Dropship is the one thing I haven't yet um, had a chance to have a go at. So I'm going to be also following some of Nick's advice um, from today and through his group as well. Um, but, you know, essentially, this is the opportunity for you guys also to fire questions that you guys have as well to Nick, to myself, um, as we go through this. So we'll leave some time at the end for some of that as well. Um, so Nick, tell us about kind of how you actually got started in your entrepreneurial journey um, and, and kind of how that took you to where you are right now. I actually got started um, before, before Shopify. Um, like I started with Shopify about two years ago. Um, but before that, I was kind of starting the, the old school way with WordPress and just um, in a completely different industry. It was still e-commerce. But uh, like when I got out of the army, I didn't really know what I was doing. This was about, you know, like six, seven years ago now. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but I dropped out of school to join the army. And I knew I didn't want to go back into that type of path, um, like finishing degree, getting a job, that kind of thing. It just wasn't really for me. So I just started looking around and kind of doing what everybody does, trying to find some type of opportunity. Uh, and eventually it led me to um, something in the entertainment services industry and building a website and just kind of focusing on learning the principles of online marketing and building out this system. Uh, and that that ended up being the first company that I built um, that, that did really well and went on to be successful. 
And it was around 2016 that I discovered this whole Shopify thing. Um, and I had a friend that was actually uh, like doing Teespring and he was selling shirts and it was something that was very new to me. Uh, I didn't really like, I didn't really understand how he was getting these types of results. And then he started to show these things about having a store and doing this on like this platform called Shopify. Uh, and I was, I was hooked immediately. Uh, I was already kind of looking for an exit from the other company that I had built because it had just become something that I wasn't really, um, I just wasn't something that I wanted to continue doing anymore. And so I started, that's when I started my Shopify journey at the beginning of 2016 um, and invested in my education to get started with that. And things took off pretty quickly for me. Uh, and then the rest is kind of history. I mean, I've just, I've been focusing on that completely now really for the past two years. That's pretty awesome. Um, so one of the questions I like to ask as an icebreaker is, if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, you had a blue ocean in front of you, unlimited money, what would you love to be doing right now? Uh, you know, that's, I mean, honestly, I would love to be doing more of what I'm doing. I mean, I, one of the things that's really cool about Ecom Empires and the worldwide Ecom tour that I'm on is this has always been my dream, really. Like, I can look back and remember when I was a kid. I can look back and remember when I was just getting out of the army and when I didn't have anything and I was struggling and, like, I would just think. And I, I would always sit there and I think about, like one day wanting to travel the world and have my life feel like it's this adventure where I'm just going from place to place and getting to meet people and do these things and see things and like be having an impact in the world. And so, uh, you know, I feel really blessed right now. I mean, it's been a long road. It's been a lot of struggle and hard work to get here, but I, I really am like kind of living out my dream right now. So, I mean, really, if I could have, the, if I have the blue ocean, in front of me it would just be to be doing more of what i'm doing really just like continuing to do it at a, a higher level and a more involved level that's amazing man um and actually there's some good love in the comments actually for some of the things that you do um generous with your time and really transparent with your results and you know as much as you know there are lots of groups and lots of experts out there not a lot of people are being as transparent with their results as you are. And, you know, the, the amount of support you put in, is there a team behind Nick Peroni or is it literally just you doing all this stuff? Yeah. And well, one of the things actually that I am focusing on now um, is, is building out my team and my infrastructure. Um, you know, this, the story for me, the way it goes is the, that first company that I mentioned um, I actually built that company up to like 50 to 60 people that we had on our payroll. And when I walked away from that, one of the reasons was because it was getting to be too corporate for me. And so I wanted to walk away and, and kind of live this solopreneur lifestyle, um, which I found and was successful at. But then, you know, as things have evolved and developed, now I'm back in this world where I really want to start building out a bigger team and I want to start building out my empire more than what it is. Like the vision is so much larger. So uh, the thing that I have been focusing on now, really over the past probably like six months or so. Um, Um, looks like we've missed, we've, we've um, lost Nick. So he's, if you, if you didn't catch it, he's actually in the Philippines right now. He's in Manila. It was raining heavily, um, he said earlier. So that was impacting the internet. And actually, this is one of the big costs of living the digital nomad life, um, especially in places where the internet, which a lot of us take for granted, isn't as good as it should be. So I'm waiting, I've, I've invited Nick back in. So hopefully he'll be uh, joining us shortly. But whilst he's doing that, um, guys, just hit the kind of likes and comments as you're going along. If you can, post your qu questions below. If you're watching the replay, hit hashtag replay so that I can come back later on and answer your questions. If you're following the live, just hit your questions down. I'm going to select some out once Nick's done his thing, and we'll go through those questions as well. Um, shout out to Geraldine. Hello. Um, Claire, Naveen, Adam, Hugh, Ray, Mario Kerry, there's quite a few cool people online. Appreciate you guys. Um, so just if you have 
just dived in. We've lost Nick temporarily um, through some kind of internet problem. So um, what we're actually going through is talking about Nick's kind of background. If you don't know about Nick, he runs Ecom Empires. Um, the group is about 60,000 people big right now. Um, and he's also doing a world tour mastermind, which is so cool. He's actually living the dream. He's going to kind of location by location, training up small groups of uh, marketers on e-com, dropship, and, and, and driving traffic as well. You know, Nick's done his thing, and hopefully he'll talk through it when he gets back, through Facebook ads, through Google, Google Shopping, et cetera, um, to bring his experience from the entertainment world into dropship, which I think is quite fascinating as well. Um, let me just have a look at the questions whilst we're waiting for Nick to come back. So yeah, I, I just from Adam. So Nick's very generous guy with his free ecom course in 2016. Absolutely. So one of the things that um, hopefully Nick will come back and talk about is the fact that although he has the ecom empires group, 60,000 people, you know, you, hopefully you'll get this through in the interview. But he's a, such a down to earth, humble guy. A lot of people would be thinking, 60,000 people. How do I monetize this? How do I maximize my re revenue? Actually, Nick's gone on and actually put a wealth of knowledge into a free e-com course. And, and it's a high value course. There's ob obviously a misnomer when people talk about a free course. You know, is it worth my time? Is it um, a cut down course, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, I've seen the course and actually really, really good as well. So um, absolutely agree with that, Adam. Um, Nick, I think we have you back. Give me a shout if you can hear me. Almost. Let me just uh, ping him. Wonders of technology, eh? Um, a few questions for Nick. So, yeah, I'll get those. Hi, Renee. Hey, Claire. Hey, Jan, Eunice, Julie, Imran. Um, so, yeah, we'll go through these questions. Hey, Nick, can you hear me? Do we have you back? I can. Okay, I just heard that. Can you hear me? I can't see I can. you at all, but I can hear you. Okay. So I guess that's a start. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I apologize. I wish you all. I mean, it's not my fault, but I, just, I feel bad that there's nothing I can do about it. It just kind of sucks right now. It's just one of the side effects of living the digital nomad life, eh? Uh, yeah, no. Cool. Um, so yeah, cool. So um, I was just actually giving a bit of background in your absence about the group and actually 60,000 people. I think like it's either close to it or you've hit it already. That's pretty amazing. Um, talk us through like where did that start? Why did that start? And how did you get it to where it is? It really started. Yeah, we're about to hit 60,000 people. Uh, it's, it's like a couple hundred people away and I'm, I'm excited about it to see. I mean, it's been less than two years and to see how much it's grown. Um, where it really started is when the group was around, I don't know, maybe like 20, 25,000 people. Um, you know, I was, I was doing well and I was just kind of living at home and just like, you know, as anybody I think can attest to when you were in this kind of, Ecom solopreneur lifestyle, it can get to be very lonely. And even if you're successful, it can start to be like a lack of, um, you know, what's going to keep pushing you to keep going. And so for me, the idea was like, why not make this community real? Why not really start trying to get out there and connect with people? Um, and so, yeah, that's where the idea came from. I, and I put the idea on the group and I was like, hey, I got this crazy idea. I don't know how you guys are going to respond, but how about. Uh, I travel the world and I will come and bring everything I know to, to do a mastermind type of event. Um, and I'm not even trying to do the events for profit. That's not really what it's about at all. If you guys, you know, just as part of the event, we cover accommodations and, and travel costs to get there. We'll set it up and I'll come, you know, to like work and network and have fun and do everything. Uh, and the response was amazing. Like, I really didn't know what to expect, but yeah, I made that post in, uh, literally there were like hundreds of comments and people like come to this country come to this country and so um, the first ones that ended up getting set up were in Bali and Vietnam and I had no idea like I'd never been to a mastermind before at all I'd never attended somebody else's mastermind I just knew of this concept of the mastermind 
And so I just showed up and did what I did. And the first one was a little shaky, but uh, it ended up going really well. And it was a really good group that we got to know each other. And then from there, it's just kept going and going and getting better every single time um, and just expanding to more and more countries. And uh, yeah, like now, now it's a whole tour and I really enjoy it. It's been very rewarding for me to get to travel and meet people and, uh, you know, get to work on people's businesses with them. Absolutely. So um, talking about kind of dropship and e-com, what's been your biggest success? What kind of niche, I guess, and what kind of um, results did you get? Uh, really? We seem to have lost him again. Oh dear, that was such a cool question as well. Um, so, so let me just read through the questions. Yeah, agree, Renee, totally awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to have him online. Unfortunately, we've got him whilst he's in Manila with some rain, with some uh, internet issues. Um, just ping him one second. Let's see if we can get him back. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's. We'll definitely get through your questions. Um, Nick said he'll, he'll, he'll try and stay on to get through as many of your questions as possible. Um, but, you know, like you, I want to find out more about Nick as well. I think he's such a cool guy. Um, and like some of you have already said, if you have, in, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping you the link to his website where you can go and have a look at the free course. And maybe that will kind of um, keep you guys busy whilst we're trying to wait for Nick to get back online. But have a look at his content. You know, for a free course, um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, and actually, as you're, as you're starting to pick up, you know, for Nick, it's not about um, maximizing, maximizing revenue. For Nick, it's about maximizing impact, and what, that's one of the key things uh, that he talks a lot about when it comes to um, his group, his his group, Ecom Empires, the masterminds that he's actually running. So. Um, the masterminds, which again, I'm, I'm filling in just to fill the time, but he actually doesn't make a profit out of them. I think, you know, that's, that's, that's a really interesting thing to be doing, to be traveling around the world and give people value without monetizing the, the value out. So if you look at some of the big e-com, Facebook ads, um, dropship people out there, they will run, uh, masterminds three, four, five, six thousand dollars and they will fill them as well. And they're high value, there's no doubt. But here's Nick, who's actually doing them um, not for profit because he's he's on a personal mission as well. So, um, you know, it, it, every entrepreneur has the, their own thing that fires them and gets them going. Some want to take seven-figure businesses to eight figures and grow it and kind of become global and worldwide. Others just want to maximize their impact. And that's one of the things that massively resonates with me that Nick's actually um, bring into the game or actually has been bringing in the game over the last two years. And for me, that's, that's just so refreshing. Um, and it's actually inspiring for someone like me to uh, have the opportunity to speak to Nick as well. So he's actually trying to log back in um, there with us, but this is, you know, look, you know, if you want the digital nomad lifestyle, you're going to have to deal with uh, dodgy internet. Um, I'm, I'm actually in my home office right now, stable internet. But I'm in London, it's been raining, it's not so great, versus he's in Manila, it's also been raining, weather is actually generally better, um, food probably better as well. Um, there we go, I think we've got him back. Nick, are you there? Hey, we have you back. Hello? You hey, me? Nick, yeah. Let's try this again. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I'm I'm trying my best to fill the empty spaces, but hopefully um, most people are getting that. So, are you? Can you hear me okay now? I can, I mean, it's still choppy on my end, but as long as you can hear me okay, I guess hopefully. And I don't know if it's going to keep cutting out. It's so weird because when it does that, I'm still like looking at you, and I can still hear you talking, but so oh. I don't really know what's happening on the other side. Yeah, it seems to cut out on my side, so maybe something between you and BeLive, but it's, it's all good. We're back again. Um, let me roll on to the next question. So when you see people working with e-com and dropship, what's like the most common problem that you see when people are trying to make this work? Uh, right now, I think the most common problem I'm seeing is that people don't have like a really um, a really – good like a thought out strategy when they're getting started you know and i know you're actually kind of a, a big 
proponent of this as well and the things I've seen, you know, the things that you talk about and I'm a fan of your content where it's like, you know, there's so much bad information that's been put out there and not always intentionally, but just people like sharing stuff without context and sharing stuff in a bubble. Yeah. And, you know, like it's given so much um, confusion out there. And so people get started with like no real plan or strategy and they have like a thousand different pieces that they're trying to put together from all these different places. And then they wonder why they're not having success, but there's really nothing consistent there. Um, and it's like, you know, you, you need a really good strategy and a really well thought out marketing plan from, from the very start. Even if you're just doing a general dropship store and your goal is to just like test a bunch of products, that's cool, but there still has to be like a good strategy there that's keeping things consistent. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for you to measure your results and get better. Absolutely. So one of the themes I've been hearing for the last kind of six months has been that dropship's dead or dying. Um, what's your view on that? No, I don't. I personally, not at all. I don't think so at all. I think that maybe, um, you know, it's, it's evolving in a way and that people need to get a little better um, because definitely there's more people that are kind of flocking to this opportunity. Um, but, you know, I network with a lot of people. I do masterminds around the world and I have like network of people that are doing this at a high level as well. People that are doing it at a, even at a much higher level than I am. Um, and I, I can say for certain that it's, it's not dead at all because the model of drop shipping is just the model of finding wholesale products and then reselling them at a profit. I mean, that model has been around for decades and it's going to be around for decades. The only thing that has changed is that with all the changes with Facebook and, you know, with just like things that are happening, people need to evolve. What worked in 2016 is not necessarily going to work the same in 2018. So like, it's just a matter of evolving to have a good strategy and understand what you're doing and not, not blaming like the outside things. It's absolutely true. So actually, a lot of people that come in and, and I find people that come in and see dropship and they see AliExpress. But actually, you don't have to just dropship from AliExpress. You can actually dropship literally from any site. So I know people that do it from um, from Amazon as well. They some people that do it in physical stores and flip products that they find cheaply offline into online. And then actually, it doesn't even need to be like that. There's people that also flip. Um, Houses, like you can buy a house cheaper, resell it, buy a house cheaper and resell it. And actually there, there's so many ways to kind of resell. I think dropship's just one, one of them. Now, one of the things I'm interested in hearing about from you is print on demand. So um, a few years ago, I took a e-com site from $800,000 to $26.5 million, which was, e which was print on demand and dropship. And you know, the great thing about that is it, it covers two pain points in one. Drop ship, you don't have to physically own the, the product and you can actually scale that globally so fast. And actually print on demand, I still think there's so much more to come. I mean, what's your kind of views on, on, on that? Yeah, well, first of all, that's, that's amazing, man. That's, that's, an incredible, uh, that's an incredible case study result. You know, that's, that's awesome. Um, but I love print on demand. I'm actually, one of the things that I have been um, focusing on this year is um, building out part of that into my infrastructure, working with a designer and a design agency to start um, really start getting it, like the opportunity um, is just amazing. And I really kind of realized this when I was working with somebody at a mastermind and I was working with them on their store uh, and they were doing printed sneakers. And then the next month after this mastermind, just all like these, this one pair of printed sneakers, they sold like a crazy amount. It was like $200,000 worth of sneakers with some other related items as well. Um, and I was like, man, like I should really be getting more involved in print on demand. So, um, yeah, I love it. I just, I think that there's a lot of opportunity right now, especially with the way the markets are trending, that people want personalized, customized items. Um, and it's something that is very brandable. And, and like you said as well, um, being able to combine dropship and print on demand, I think is a really smart strategy. Absolutely. So um, Nick, I'm sure you've seen the case study from Pop Socks, uh, Nick Shackelford and his, mini, his team as well. Um, that was amazing because in Q4, over 30 days, they scaled to 4 million revenue literally from a standing start. And, and you know, that's one of the biggest things about dropship is if you can find good suppliers, You've got the market and you've got the demand, which, you know, um, they did it in November or December last year. 
then you can literally take it to the moon. And I think that's just one of the fascinating things about it, that you're not held by physical inventory constraints. Yes, you lose margin on uh, maybe not having your own branded products, but you can actually scale that a lot faster as well. What I'm interested in is like, when, when do you go from drop ship to considering kind of own label and creating your own white label? Nick, are you there? Yeah, he's still there. I, I lost you for a second, but okay, I can no hear you now. Um, so I'm interested in like, knowing, so I was just talking about kind of um, the Pop Socks um, case study where Nick Shackelford and his team took them literally from a standing start to 4 million. And it was print and demand, it was dropship. But I'm interested in knowing from you, like when do you take a dropship product and actually create your own brand out of it? Is that something you've done before? To a private label, a dropship product? Yeah, that's right. No, I, I have I've worked with brands, um, but personally I haven't I haven't done any private labeling myself. I've always just strictly I mean I've worked with supply like when you start to do something well working on your own like supply resources, but I haven't looked into private labeling a dropship product myself. Cool. Um so one of the questions I love asking entrepreneurs is how do you manage the time between sharing knowledge and learning? How do you kind of get that balance right? Mm, that's that's a great question. I, uh, you know, one of the things that I've tried to do is I've 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 looked at ecom empires and like what I want to build there and the vision I have for that, and I try to align it with what I'm doing in a way where I'm working on things that I know as I get results and as I get um, things that are working for me, then I can use that to share back into the group of people. So I guess my strategy is that I try to learn myself and apply and, and prove that it works in my own business in a way, of course, it's going to make me money and make my business continue to grow. And then also be able to get the dual benefit of then taking those results and that content and being able to share it with people as well. Absolutely. Um, so talking about the kind of masterminds, um, you know, you've, you're on this journey now to go and mastermind in these different countries. What's been your kind of motivator for that? What what got you started, and where do you want to take that? Um, the, you said the motivation for it for the masterminds. Motivation and kind of the direction that you want to take it in. Yeah, you know, for me, ecom empires is really becoming like my favorite thing. Honestly, it's uh, I have a I have a really big vision for where I want to go with this, and so you know, the masterminds for me, honestly, are just getting started. Um, I, I've been traveling a lot around Southeast Asia so far, uh, going through a lot of these countries here. Um, but you know, after this one here in the Philippines, it's happening this month. That's why I'm in Manila right now. I have an event coming up in like a week. Um, is then going into Europe and starting to explore Europe a little bit uh, with London. That'll be happening after this. Uh, and then, you know, from there, moving into other places, like I want to see everywhere. I want to go to South America. I want to go to Africa, uh, eventually, you know, into the U.S. as well. But um, honestly, the U.S. is kind of low on my priority list because I'm from the U.S. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the goal for me really right now is having an impact and, and really um, growing the brand and seeing, like, how, how big that I can take this because, while not everything is formulated in my mind, as I do this, there's amazing partnership opportunities that are formed and things that are like, you know, really like just exciting for me. So there's so much extra benefit that comes out of it as well um, by just going out there and giving value and doing your best to change people's lives. Absolutely. So I'm trying to picture your um, accent. Which part of the U.S. are you from? Uh, I'm from Philadelphia originally. That's where I was kind of like uh, grew up around. And right now I live just outside of D.C. Uh, I live just outside the um, capital in the DMV area of Maryland. Awesome. Cool. Um, so I'm actually starting my first mastermind um, in London in two weeks time. It's a small group for people on my course. And one thing I'm keen to understand from you is like what makes a good mastermind? I think that it's really, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I think a couple of things. Number one, uh, it definitely has to be like creating an environment where 
where there's interaction because a lot of times the best things that happen within a mastermind come from just talking to people, networking and getting that type of um, getting that type of interaction going where people want to share and learn with each other because you know just getting experience from people and, and getting to talk with people that are doing the same thing like that's when really good ideas can happen and, and people can support you and help you in your business um, because you know certainly it's about knowing and, and teaching and sharing everything that you can um, and I know you're good at that and that's something that I'm good at but like also one of the things that I've learned about it is really being able to kind of help encourage that environment and get people in a mode of wanting to work with each other and share with each other and talk to each other about things. Um, and then also I think, uh, you know, honestly, I think another thing that makes a really good mastermind as well um, is, is, you know, besides, besides the, the knowledge, because of course that's what matters the most is you got to come and bring the best knowledge. I think that's obvious. But um, I think one of the other things that really works well to make people enjoy it is is finding a good balance between like teaching uh, and then also having time where like you're in a more relaxed environment where you get to like just get to talk with each other and get to know each other as well um, you know because when you're doing a mastermind and you're spending time with people like you don't want it just to be boring you know you want people to actually enjoy it and not just get something out of the information you're sharing but also get something out of it in like the the value of being there and meeting those people and kind of getting to know you as well absolutely absolutely so one of the things i was actually filling people in on whilst you were um out of range was the fact that you're running these masterminds not for profit and like i know that there's so many uh, e-com, dropship, Facebook ads, lots of entrepreneurial guys that are doing masterminds and charging top dollar, like three, four, five, six thousand dollars per person. And you know, they're, they're good value. It's not to say they're not good value, um, one, two to three day masterminds, but you're doing it not for profit. I mean, like, w what's your kind of, um, your, your angle on that? Um, well, you know, really when, Really, when it started, uh, it's kind of the same idea of, of giving away the free course in, in the beginning when I started Ecom Empire. It's like I, I really do have a desire to be, to be different um, in, in like just this online space. You know, my, my goal was, was never really to, to make it about, um, about me trying to get profits out of people. You know, my goal was always to have an impact because I'm a big believer of like the Zig Ziglar kind of concept where if you just help a lot of people get what they want, then, you know, that, that reward is going to be given back to you as well and, and you're going to get what you want. And I've certainly seen that because, like I said, the masterminds, I don't even have to do them for profit and it's growing the brand so well because people are getting really good results and it's not like, oh, he's not doing it for profit. It must not be that good. I mean, I've had people tell me that they've gone much more expensive masterminds and that they don't even compare mm -hmm. to the type of information, you know, that we're covering and, and what I go over in, in mine. So like, I really love that. Like there's, there's just kind of a sense of, I love knowing that, that I can, that I can deliver that type of value and not make it about the money because it makes people, um, you know, really appreciate it. And it really, like for me, it's also growing the brand at the same time. And the type of doors that that's opened for me has, has been incredible, honestly. So um, I think from the beginning, I just kind of saw it as a win-win situation. Like, don't make it about the profits, make it about the value that you can deliver and that, you know, you're going to get so much back out of this from the experience and from the doors that it opens for you. Absolutely. So I, I've actually seen you, the agenda for your London Mastermind. And, you know, for the cost, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly shocked. It's a three day event and you're actually going through end to end of literally getting started running and actually profiting and growing as well. Um, it's, it's actually a really cool event. And I'm super excited because I'm going to be part of it as well. So I'm going to be sharing uh, some of the stuff I, I talk about for Facebook ads and also some of the stuff I haven't shared before as well, which I'm really keen to bring to your mastermind because it's you know, I think that um, when you talk about the impact and stuff that massively resonates with me and I'm inspired by what you've done and I'd love to get to your position where I can influence that many people in a positive way as well. I'm really looking forward to that. Tell me a bit more about the Mastermind itself, the three-day event in London that's coming up in July. 
Yeah, well, first of all, I I am excited to have you part of it um, for real because you know, like your your expertise in, in Facebook ads and um, you know what you've been able to accomplish there um, and and kind of that like insider connection you have with Facebook. I'm sure that you're going to be sharing some amazing stuff, and so uh, I'm actually looking forward to hearing what you have to share just as much as anybody else. Uh, and then for my part, you know, with the masterminds, I, I really. You know, like I said, I try to make it I, – one thing that I do always do is I try to get an idea beforehand of who is there, like who's attending, what the, what the experience level is, because sometimes it varies. Uh, and so the, the, I, really, I really try very hard to tailor the content and tailor the delivery to the type of audience that we have. Um, but in terms of the overall agenda, I mean, it, it ranges and, and covers basically as much as we can – um, in the time that we're there. And I, I love when it has other speakers involved because then you're able to get other people involved in it. Um, and I will, I will go over like everything from, from the basics of, you know, one, one of the things that I think is, is really important and that I always cover is like still starting with like really going into the foundation and the strategies of what it takes to build and scale, um, you know, a, a Shopify store and to, to put a branding to it and to like the foundation. Because I think that a lot of people with online marketing, they skip over the basic principles of, of marketing and sales and, and some of those high level concepts that like those are the things that make it so you are not only good at building a Shopify store, but you're just good at e-commerce in general. You're good at marketing in general. So I really like to cover a lot of those concepts and then uh, get into a lot of the specifics about what's working now with Shopify and what's working now with running ads and, um, you know, creatives and, and tricks and things like what you can do um, to help your conversions. And uh, not only from this stuff that, I have in my experience, but also from like networking and constantly doing this. One of the advantages I think for any time I do a mastermind now is that you're getting all the past experience that I have from doing these every single time because I, I go there and every time like the format gets better and it gets updated and it gets current. And after the mastermind is over, I go back through my slides and I update them and I update what needs to be like fixed because as I'm constantly doing this every time, like the, the information just gets more dialed in um, for what I know people want and what I know like is really helping people um, get, get results. So uh, yeah, you know, in terms of topics, I mean, it, it really spans across the whole thing. Um, from strategy and foundation to, um, you know, conversions and, and the marketing side of things and different marketing channels and, um, you know, understanding, like, how, how you're scaling and how you're branching out and building a brand. And, um, you know, one of the cool things is, too, of course, is any questions people have and being able to get direct feedback on, on what you're doing while you're there. Cool. Um, when when is the mastermind? What are the dates and um, how much does it cost for people to get access? Um, the dates are July sixth to July eighth, um, and it's going to be right in downtown London. Uh, I've never been to London, so I'm excited about this. So it's three days. It's going to be right in downtown London. Um, I believe we're hosting it at the, the Holiday Inn down there. I forget exactly which one, but, um, and the cost, the cost of the mastermind is um, 600, 600 for, for everything. That includes um, your, in, you know, part of the mastermind for all three days and then lunch, lunch is included each day with the mastermind as well. Cool, so for those in the UK, that's about 450, I think. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to being there anyway. That's. Um, going to be totally awesome. And the thing is, like, we don't have enough of this in the UK. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes down, because I think there is a need for more of these kind of knowledge shares in the UK. I know it's bigger in the US and actually in other places like Thailand and Vietnam, etc. Um, but I think we're slightly behind on that. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. I mean, I've never been to the UK. And I know that there's a, a like a strong e-com community there. Um, so, and I've never been to London. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, to be able to be there with everybody and go over all this stuff. And we're going to fit a lot in the three days. Um, and you know, like the, the value, um, that people are, are going to get from it are, and, but you know, one of the reasons actually going back to it, that, 
um, that it's nice doing it not for profit is because I never I never feel like I'm selling it because I'm not because I'm not making any money off of it. So I'm just telling you like really the type of value that you're getting from it I know is is so valuable because like um, you know there are events like for example the Ecom Mastery Live which is going to be a great event by the way but that's that's like seven hundred dollars just for one day you know so like for this it's it's six hundred dollars for three days and you're getting like multiple people speaking and sharing like everything that's working now with ads and shopify and drop shipping and print on demand so yeah i'm excited about it. i think it's going to be fantastic and i think everybody's going to really enjoy it that, that attends and, and i think it's going to be quite intimate actually because i think there's what 35 places or people going um and it just means that everyone's got access to everyone it's going to be a more of a networking event than some of these 500 people events as well yeah, I think I think that's true. I think we'll probably end up uh, looking at around 30, 35 people. And yeah, that's a good point because every mastermind that I've done, um, there is always uh, every single one of them. There is still some type of group chat or you know some type of connection there, WhatsApp chat or whatever it is, where people are still connected. People are still helping each other. Still, the first mastermind that I did in Bali still people will be talking to each other in the group chat, sharing things and congratulating each other and showing support. So like you really do, um, it, it's nice because one of the things that I realized and I think was one of the big motivators for me in doing this in the beginning is just that like when you're doing this and you're, you're living this life and like success is only so much fun if you don't have anybody to do it with. So you know, getting out there and, and having people you can network with and then that actually becomes like like uh, friends, you know, like a community and, and people that you will s still communi uh, communicate with and stay up with and congratulate and get tips and advice from. Like, that's, that's really one of the invaluable parts that ends up lasting so much longer than the mastermind itself. Well, um, we've got an invite for you to go to Amsterdam. Is that on your list of places to visit in Europe? What was that? A list of places in Europe or what? Uh, there's an invite to go to Amsterdam in Holland. Oh, oh, for have I been? To, I've been to Amsterdam. Um, I didn't, I didn't quite catch what you said. If I have, like, if I've been there or if I want to go there, but um, there's, there's uh, an invite to go and host and uh, mastermind there. Oh, mastermind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, definitely, Europe is one of the places that I want to start branching out into more. So. Um, you know, these will be my first events in London, and then I'm speaking in Barcelona at the Ecom Mastering Live event. Um, and so, you know, I haven't decided yet if there's going to be an event somewhere else in Europe after the Ecom Mastering Live. That's in that's in like July 20th, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to continue traveling around Europe. There's there's so many great places, and um, you know, other other areas that that we could do this in. So uh yeah it's, it's definitely a possibility there's nothing planned yet but i mean i'm always open for those kinds of ideas awesome um so i'm going to take um questions from the um comments um before i do that I, what i'd love for you to do is hit the like and love if you've actually found something of use on uh, the stuff that nick's taking you through and also share this as well um, that'd be super awesome if you can do that I'm going to go through the comments now and let's fish out right from the start what we've got. So I've um, got a question here from Naveen. I'm going to bring this up. I don't know if you can see this on your screen, Nick. Do you see the questions when they pop up? No, I can't see any questions. Okay. I just see... All right. I'll, I'll read them out. So question from Naveen. So besides displaying testimonials, so video or screenshots, or offering a free sample, what are some of the top ways to overcome the objection of this is too good to be true. In, in what way? O overcome the objection of this is too good to be true in, in what way? Like, so in, I, I guess um, because I know Naveen's business, um, he offers a high value, low cost product. So similar to yourself, offering the mastermind for you know, zero, pro zero product. How do you get over the fact that people are going to um, look at the price and think that the value of it's lower than it really is? Oh, you, okay. So we're talking. I wasn't sure. So we're talking about on a store here, like if somebody's selling a product on a yeah, store. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, okay. Well, so the idea, I think, in in any time when you're, you know, just marketing in general, when you're looking at a product page, is there's there's 
the, the cost value, right, of what you're actually charging, and then there's the perceived value. So, like, it, it's all about on a product page, the perceived value has to be higher than the cost value. So our job as marketers, no matter what we're selling, is to create that, that type of trust and that perceived value in there. I mean, I'm not sure if you're saying, like, in terms of the original question, I wasn't quite sure if you were talking about, like, how do you get over that in your own mind? But if you're talking about how we market that to people, I mean, you want to look for products that, of course, number one, have a high perceived value. So when you're looking at something that um, is at a low wholesale cost, you know that the market of, of that item is something that the perceived value is much higher and then building out, that's why I think building a brand and really having a solid foundation is so important because it has nothing to do with gimmicks. It has nothing to do with hypey apps that, you know, people put all over their site. It, it really just has to do with, like, building something that people can trust and that they look at. And it's like, you know, it, they, they see and they feel the value in, in what you're offering. I have a friend, Ernest Epps. Um, who does high ticket drop shipping, and it goes back to the point that you I, said. I think Ernest might be on the call actually. If you want to give him a shout. Uh, yeah, uh, Ernest, he's going to be at the he's going to be at um, at the mastermind in the Philippines I'm doing. And uh, so anyway, I mean, I this this dude's killing it, and I love what he's doing because you know he's he's proving and and like really a great example right now that you don't have to drop ship from AliExpress, and he's working with U.S. suppliers and brands and. Um, and, you know, still doing the same thing, though, where he's finding items wholesale and then marking them up. And he's even doing it at a high ticket level. So you have to imagine he might be finding an item that already at a wholesale cost is like a thousand dollars, let's say, as an example, and then still marking it up another five hundred dollars to be able to sell it. And, you know, how is that possible? Well, he just understands the branding of what he's doing and he understands how to create that perceived value of, of, you know, the item that he's selling in the minds of the consumer um, throughout the website, throughout the marketing angle, throughout your retargeting, throughout your email marketing. You know, it's not always on the first touch that somebody's going to buy something. It's important to understand, uh, Ezra talks about this um, really well, that the e-commerce sales cycle has gotten a lot longer, right? So it's not necessarily that you're always trying to just convert somebody right the first time they see something. That perceived value can be built over time with remarketing and email marketing and, and uh, you know, multi-channel marketing where your, your brand is hitting them across different social networks to really create that trust and that perceived value that makes them want to come back and, and go through that purchase. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next question from Julie. How can we get creative collecting emails for our e comm store? Pop-ups and $10 off seem to be what everyone's doing. Is there a way to get more creative and engaging with this? Collecting emails? That, yeah. that was the question? From, from your e-com store. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's a great question. I, you know, one of the things that I would say in thinking about being creative is maybe think about like, okay, you know, we think about different ways to collect emails. Um, and I'll come back to that in a second, but you could also just think in general about different ways to collect subscribers, um, like through running ads focused on building messenger subscribers or uh, even push notifications. Push notifications is something I'm looking into right now. Um, there's this great app called Push Out. I met the owner of it. Um, they're like, they just hit a thousand five star reviews or something. And it's pretty awesome because um, like Messenger, push notifications have a higher sign-up rate than emails. They have a higher open rate. They have a higher engagement rate. So, you know, I think one of the creative ways you could think is to, to kind of think about it, not just in terms of email marketing, but also think about it in terms of how can I just be collecting subscribers? Um, uh, again, I, I, I reference Ezra sometimes because he's somebody I follow, but um, he talks about Messenger's marketing as like the future, you know, what's the future of e-commerce marketing in, in Messenger. So, uh, you know, trying to branch into some different strategies to be able to create uh, engagement and collect subscribers in more than just email, uh, I think is one way to be really creative about it. And then in terms of email, uh, you know, that's that's a good question. I mean, I generally, I'll be honest, I, if, when I see e-commerce, I generally stick to the basics with like, uh, like an exit intent pop and 
um, you know, running running sometimes engagement ads just to get people to sign up to a messenger thing. But um, you know, if, if I was thinking creatively about it, I think that maybe you could do things where you you start playing with landing pages where you're trying to get an email opt in, like in exchange for um, you know almost running it more like a funnel where you're sending them to a landing page to get an email first and send them, sending them straight to a product page. Uh, it's not something I do as much personally. I'll, I mean, I'll be very open about that, but I do know some people that do that very well where they're using landing pages and connecting them to Shopify to build subscriber lists um, as well as, you know, put people through a funnel in their, in their marketing. Absolutely. Um, there's a question from Geraldine. Um, so I, I don't know if we covered this. What's your background before getting in, into e -com? So I think you've covered that earlier. Um, is your course still available? The free course in the group, yeah. Yeah, it's available. It always will be available. I always, uh, not always, but I'm, I'm very often constantly going in there and updating stuff and adding uh, adding more videos and more things. And, uh, you know, not to, not to plug myself, but since the question was asked, that, that course, I actually, I still get messages. I still get messages from people that share with me uh, incredible results they're getting um, from going through that course. And, you know, because I know one thing that always follows up the question to is the course available is, you know, it's, it's a little dated now. Does it still work? And, uh, yeah, you know, some things have changed, like the, the, the user interface of Shopify is different than when I made the course. And, uh, the user face of Facebook ads is a little bit different, but the strategies themselves and, and the, the principles there and the ideas there are still, uh, really solid because they're not based on gimmicks. They're not based on hype. They're based on real marketing and sales principles uh, and, you know, Facebook principles that are like things that still kind of stand the test of time and will be able to get you started and get you getting results. And, you know, then you can kind of branch out and look at some other things as well. But uh, yeah, I, I still stand by that a hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, a shout from Naveen. I really appreciate you introducing us to him. I've spent the last couple of days reviewing Ecom Empires. It's an awesome complimentary course to yours. That's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, grab Nick's calls, grab mine, and go dominate. Um, Jason Neo, I'm facing super high CPM right now. Tired of changing to new business manager, new ad account, new pixel. Um, my U US CPM is $40. We're broad targeting easily. Eight million at least. Um, honestly, I don't see what the question is there, but um, I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe ask Nick. I mean, I've got my views. High CPM. What do you do um, if you're advertising in a niche with high CPM? Yeah, I mean, you you probably are, have your own great answers for this as well. Um, you know, high CPM is. I mean, it's it's one of these things right now. So one thing that I, I've seen that is that is working. Um, that's kind of a workaround to to this is if you're optimizing for purchase on something um, right out of the gate and, and you're getting a high CPM, then one thing that I've tried is optimizing for add to cart uh, and switching up your objective like a step down the funnel and you'll see your CPM drop a little bit and you can still get really great results and start building up that data and then optimize to purchase a little bit farther down the line once you've built up a lot of data. Um, that's something that you know, because I'm like in a niche right now that I'm selling in uh, in the in the health niche. Like it's just even with video, because normally the first thing I would say is, well, start using really good videos and make sure you're getting engagement, running engagement ads alongside to the same post ID as the conversion ad. But even that sometimes, you know, I'm seeing CPMs on videos that are upwards of fifty dollars in the U.S. and like um, so, you know. But then I see that if I optimize for add to cart instead of purchase, it's a step down the funnel. But, you know, my CPM will drop down under $20 and will be much more manageable to start collecting a lot of data, start getting a lot of add to carts, getting purchases and getting people in the funnel so that I have people to retarget and bring back to, to close that sale. Um, so that's one thing um, I think that is like something that's kind of kind of working for me now. Um, trying to think of anything else that I could say. I mean, also... You know, depending on the audience, you know, there's things you can try and switching up the audience, like depending on how you're targeting, um, you know, like if you're if you're targeting engaged shoppers, for example, your CPM is naturally going to be higher because you're targeting like a higher sector of the audience. 
Um, so, like, you know, that's kind of a general answer, but you, you got to test a lot sometimes with the different audiences that you can target to find different things that, that can work. Um, you know, I'm sure, and there's some other things too, but like, I'm sure, I'm sure you have some great answers on that as well. Well, I think one of the key things that you said is about um, the kind of targeting the buyers. If they're in market, the level of competition is going to be maxed out. So your CPMs are naturally going to be higher. Then this strategy, you can try to cut through manual bid and stuff like that. Then it gets quite technical. And I know like a lot of people starting off with Shopify and dropship and e-com, there's a lot to take on. Like I wouldn't necessarily try and go really, really deep into um, trying to cut through audiences. If you haven't got your product right and you're not able to pitch it right, you've not got your product conversion working and stuff like that. If you're going straight into a competitive niche, then you're going to really struggle. Um, I'd consider trying to, to step back from that um, niche, go a little slightly broader, and then use techniques like video views to self-select a new audience. So what that means is you can go straight to the same audience, but run a video views campaign, a real strong video, and get people who have engaged with that video you target them, that becomes a custom audience. And that's a cheaper way of doing it. Um, other ways, um, a couple of people in my mastermind have seen this as well, is if you've got a really strong audience and a strong creative, you can run a page post engagement ad and scale that up alongside your website conversion ad. And actually what happens is, although you see a lower click-through rate on your page post engagement, you're driving more traffic at a cheaper rate. So uh, one of the screens that was shared in the mastermind today had a CPM of like two or three dollars for a page post engagement ad where the website conversion was something like 20 or 30 dollars so you got far more clicks and actually this cost per acquisition was more profitable so there's lots of hacks that you can play around with it but i, I think you know um depending on where you are on your journey of e-com and shopify get your um products fit right and then if you found a product you can scale up then go into the strategies of facebook ads and you know how you can cut through and stuff like that uh, so i believe that helps um Ray's got a question, but Nick, how do you source and then test products before scaling them up? The holy grail. Source and test products before what? Scaling up. Oh, before scaling up. Um, well, I still, so I still go right from AliExpress. Uh, so what my basic format looks right now is I'm working with a team uh, and I have a, I have a guys doing product research uh, and a guy that's doing videos. So uh, we'll go through and use a bunch of various different methods between manual and softwares to be looking for products, right? And then uh, getting videos made to to test these. And then based on the strength of a product, uh, you know, starting to sell. That's when I, I do have supplier relations now that I will, you know, just based on experience and networking and selling where um, I won't really take it unless I think it's worth the time. So if something starts selling and it looks like it's doing well, then, yeah, I'll reach out and I'll be like, hey, we have this product. Um, are you able, to, you know, like what price can you get this at and what's your shipping going to be like and can you send it to these countries? Um, so, I mean, it, it's a pretty simple process, really. It's just still a matter of, of testing um, and going through and testing enough products. And then if a product is doing really well and has a really massive audience, like one thing that I just did right now, uh, and I know that a lot of guys that are, that are doing e-com at a high level do this as well, is they're testing and then if something's doing well and it has that real mass appeal kind of uh, audience, then they'll take it and put it into its own store uh, or into its own funnel. Um, which will be like a single product with maybe three or four related products for upsells and cross sells. And then, you know, they'll get that video made um, and then they'll build out like, say, you know, they'll build out like a, a four week funnel um, where you, you know, like you're not, again, you're not just focusing on necessarily running straight to purchase, but, you know, you're running some like, uh, like he was just talking about, like you'll have some video views ads going, some engagement ads and building up some data and then moving into like your purchase conversion ads and then getting your sequential retargeting set up. So um, that, that's kind of the system that I follow and then scaling based on the strength of, um, based on the strength of, you know, what type of sales you're doing, like trying trying to scale out as many ad sets as possible and build out as many audiences as possible. Awesome. Um, got a question from Gary. Do you think Facebook will ban drop shipping ads? Um, he says, I see many complaints from customers about delivery times and poor quality products. 
seems like there's a lot of scammers taking advantage of drop shipping. Um, given Facebook's recent uh, problems and policy, what, what, what do you see happening with that? Yeah, I, so I think, well, first of all, I, I, from, from my understanding, I and mean, this is just, you know, I, I don't work at Facebook, but from my understanding, um, Facebook doesn't have a problem with e-commerce and drop shipping. It has a problem with stores that are delivering a bad experience to its users because Facebook is all about the user experience. And so it's, it's really, and they are cracking down there. There are, you know, I just know from my network, there are many, many accounts getting banned all, all over the place and, you know, payment methods getting suspended and things that are, you know, like they're cracking down. They, they, don't, they don't want these bad experiences happening. They don't want people getting taken advantage of on the platform. Uh, and, you know, it really has nothing to do with your ad spend either. I, I've heard from Facebook reps that I've talked with personally that there are, are big, big ad spend accounts that are getting shut down the same as any other account. So, you know, they're really looking out for the user experience, and that's why they have that customer survey now. Um, that's why Facebook scrapes your site. If you ever notice when you first upload an ad, you will auto, they won't show it in Facebook, but if you're using like a shortened link on Google, you'll see it. You'll get like six or seven clicks immediately from that ad because Facebook is going to go and scrape your site. They're going to look for things like forthcoming this. Ah, we seem to have lost Nick again. That was actually quite interesting. So um, actually, I'll just follow on from Nick was what Nick was saying um, before we lost him. Um, Actually, what Facebook do is they do send bot traffic from Facebook to go and check out your ads and your landing pages. So a lot of people will see disapproved ads that will automatically get flagged up because of something on your landing page. So Facebook have these bots that are actually going out there and checking out your landing page and just looking for common things. Even something like, do you have a privacy policy link? If you have no links on your landing page, that's a flag. You know, at least you need to have some links out there. So um, Facebook will be trying to make sure that the you know that Facebook don't care about you. They don't care about you as the advertiser or your website or your product or anything like that. They only care about the user. And this is something I really try and press home to people. When you're advertising on Facebook, keep Facebook happy, keep their users happy, and, and then then you'll get what you want out of it. So you know if you are worried about drop ship and quality and customer experience and stuff like that, you know, that's the reason why Facebook are now rating stores. A lot of you uh, will have seen that Facebook do push out surveys um, to e-com stores to rate the experience, and you can go and check that out as well to see what your store rating is like. And Facebook are doing that to keep the quality high for their users. That's what it's all about. Imagine if the experience on Facebook was, you know, just absolutely plastered with dropshippers, bad experience, broken products, bad customer experience. People would leave Facebook, and that's what it's all about. You need to keep Facebook happy. So um, Facebook will keep, do what they need to do to keep the newsfeed as clean as possible. Whether that means stopping ads for crypto and Bitcoin and stuff like that, or launching um, a tool to make sure that e-com store owners get their stores rated, but that's the key thing. As long as Facebook's users are happy, then Facebook are happy, and then you'll get what you want as well. Um, Nick, are you with us again? Uh, I think Nick's still gone. Um, let me see if there's any questions I can answer. Not really a question I can answer, but Geraldine says, how can you guys join forces to change the world? Uh, we're going to be in London. We're going to be doing a mastermind for e-com and dropship. Um, so if you want to check out our stuff live and raw, come speak to us and get some help as well. Um, absolutely join us in London um, early July. In fact, whilst we're waiting for Nick to come back, I've got the link here. Guys, you should check it out. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, joining Nick and the team to talk about e-com and Facebook ads. Hey, Nick, um, you're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I just carried on your, um, your your take on Facebook and stuff. And one of the key things I was talking about is, and this is something I really preach, keep the user happy. If the user is happy, then Facebook's happy. And then Facebook will kind of let you do what you want. So... Um, as, as far as dropship goes, keep your customer experience high, keep your product quality high. You know, there's so many tactics you can do. Like if, if um, someone's bought a product and they're unhappy with it, just refund it. Like even don't, in many cases, don't even ask for the product back. Just keep them happy. You might lose 10, 20, $30 on one customer, uh, but it's not worth 
tarnishing your website, your brand, getting negative reviews and stuff like that. So the key thing is just keep the user happy. If, if the user's happy, Facebook is happy, and then you can get what you want out of Facebook as well. Um, so question from Kerry, how do you identify a good niche? So how do you find what? I, how do you identify a good niche? Finding a good niche. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's niche out in the U.S. It's uh, niche out here in the U.K. Niche. <laughs> okay. I was just making sure. I, okay. So, um, well, I mean, that's actually, that, that's a huge topic. Well, it's, it's one, I mean, I, I have a lot of stuff that I cover on that for niche and product research um, in the masterminds. But I think to, to kind of sum up some good ideas with it is, you know, it's, it's understanding, for me, in my opinion anyway, it's understanding that there's a couple levels to research and that you really have to put the time in. Um, you know, there, there's two ways you can go about it. Like if, if you're just getting started and you have no idea what to sell in, then you can kind of create this general type of store with just like a cool, catchy, brandable name and start experimenting with some niches. But, you know, for me personally, what I like is, is kind of uh, doing some market research and, and really looking at what's working out there. Um, because you can go see the big categories, you know, like there, you can go and find the big categories by going, um, just, just going to sites like Amazon and AliExpress and you'll see what the, the biggest types of categories are at the broadest level. Uh, it's really about kind of narrowing down from there. Um, so, you know, for, for me, I think that really finding a niche is more about, is more about like understanding a market opportunity because really there's so many niches that can be profitable and you know like I go to masterminds and I see people that are still getting started in like the pets niche and I see people still getting started in like the fashion niche and you know if you put the time in and you and you find good marketing angles and and you're you're going out there and doing what you need to do then you can still be profitable doing that so um, you know I think a lot of it really has to come down with looking for the way that you want to brand yourself and the, the looking for the opportunities in the marketplace with like like what you want to do um, and just uh, you know giving yourself room one thing I, I talk about a lot is like this hybrid strategy where you you have this general type of store but you give yourself room to test different niches across different things because you may not necessarily know what's going to work in the beginning and then when you do find something that works and there could be this, you know, for example, right now, like with a general store um, that I'm working with, uh, you know, with a, with a team is we were just building like a general hybrid store that was testing out, um, you know, like gadgets and life hack type stuff um, that are really popular items nowadays. And, and then we ended up coming across this item. It has a really big opportunity, a uh, really mass market opportunity that I never would have really guessed that niche before. But when we saw it and we saw the click through rates that it was getting and the response that it was getting, like, you know, it was like, okay, there's, there's something here. And then started to go and look at Google Trends and started to go and look at Keyword Planner and kind of validate this niche. You know, like once you, once you, you just have to kind of get a bunch of ideas, really. I don't know a better way to do it than to just go out there and start testing things and start really getting some ideas by actually doing it. And then when you do start to see some of these niche opportunities, taking them and validating them in places like um, Google Trends and the Keyword Planner and seeing like, okay, what type of audience here is here? What type of demand is, is available here? Um, you know, that I can now maybe build something around this. Um, that, that's personally been the way that I do it. So, I mean, I know there's different ways and different thoughts on it, but I, I like to start at kind of a broad level and work with a lot of things and, and narrow in until I find something and, and like be doing the research to validate like what type of demand is here for this market. Cool. Um, Nick, I'm uh, cognizant of the time because I know it's like, late mid morning i think uh, really early morning actually three four o'clock view so um i know we've gone over the hour so i really appreciate you coming on to speak to us i'd love to have you back again um with faster broadband that would be awesome um but yeah maybe some other time we'll get you back online um there's still a lot of questions i don't know maybe if i can ping them over to you later or if you can kind of answer them uh when you get a time that'd be awesome but really appreciate you coming on uh, to speak to us I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person and speaking at your event. Where can people follow you? How best to kind of follow you and keep up to date with uh, what you're up to? 
Yeah, uh, well, so, I mean, Ecom Empires is, is where I'm the most active. That's that's where, uh, that's like my home, honestly. So um, if, if you're not in the Ecom Empires group and you want to join, you can just look it up, Ecom Empires on Facebook, and, and we'd be happy to have you. Um, and then, yeah, for the questions, man, I would love to um, try to reschedule this when I do have a, a good Wi-Fi connection. It's it's normally, I don't, you know, I don't want people to think badly of Manila. Normally, Wi-Fi is not terrible, but um, like I did, I did a live just last week, actually, from the same place. It's just because of this, like, monsoon that hit over the past couple of days that there's been a lot of Wi-Fi trouble. So, uh, you know, maybe we can reschedule and get to some of these questions sometime in the future because, uh, yeah, it would be cool to do this again and be able to have a be able to have a little bit more of a dialogue, so I can like understand and not keep getting cut off. Awesome, cheers, Nick. Um, enjoy the um, the rest of your break out in Philippines. Looking forward to your seeing you in London, um, and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you, man. I, I thank you everybody that that tuned in and watched this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye.